Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter and advisor, saying this morning she does not believe the press is the enemy of the American people. Now, why would she? Well, because her father has said that over and over again. Here's her response when asked by Axios. First, I have to ask you, we have a number of our colleagues here on the press. Do you think that we're the enemy of the people? Sorry? Do you think that we're the enemy of the people? No, I do not. Are you looking for me to elaborate? Sure. Um, no, I don't. Okay. No, no, and no, I don't. With me now, CNN political commentator Earl Lewis and legal analyst Paul Callan. And Paul, we'll get into the Manafort trial in a moment, but this just crossed, and I wanted Errol to, to weigh in on it. And I, I sort of laugh, and the audience laugh, but it's actually not funny at all when the president calls the, 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 you know, the fourth estate, the press, the enemy of the American people. And Ivanka Trump clearly said no. She also uh, was at, on a very different page with her, her dad when she was asked about the family separation. She called it a low point for me as well. Um, but also warned of coyotes and other other issues with children being trafficked. Um, you know, look, this is she she's out there more now, as the New York Times elaborated on this past. That's weekend. right. She's out there more now and, and standing opposite her father on some things. Absolutely. And this is by no means is this anything resembling a big tent, shall we say. But um, one of the tensions that's been running through the White House from the beginning was that she and her husband, Jared Kushner, seem to be in a different place than a lot of the hardcore real workhorses of the Trump administration. So there are times when they are a little bit isolated. But the familial connection, of course, means that they can't be completely excluded, mm -hmm. can't be fired, can't be removed. And so it ends up helping the administration in some respects to have some, someone there. I would point out, just in that exchange, though, it kind of gets laughed off. Oh, ha, ha, she's on the, a different page than her father when it comes to this hot-button phrase. But underlying it, of course, is a very serious issue. And uh, yes. I don't know if, if she was given uh, the, the right level of serious attention about what it means to have a president, even if it is her father, making those kind of comments. That's really where the interview, mm -hmm. I would have hoped, could have gone. Followed up. Paul, to you on uh, Mueller and the investigation and the different page that the president is on from his own legal team. And, and the reporting in the New York Times this morning from Mike Schmidt and Maggie Haberman really makes you believe this isn't just a they're acting as though they're on different teams. That no, the president really does want to sit down with Mueller, uh, even though his lawyers are advising him against it. And here's why. They write, quote, in effect, he being the president, believes that he can convince the investigators for the special counsel of his belief that their own inquiry is a witch hunt. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, it's not surprising to me that the president uh, would, in his own mind, think he could talk Mueller out of investigating him. So, I mean, this is a possibility. But I can tell you this, no lawyer will ever recommend to him that he should sit down and talk with Mueller. And I suspect that in the end, the president will follow his lawyer's advice on something that might be as critical as whether he survives the presidency. Even if it means not sitting down at all for an interview? Because we know from Gloria Borger's reporting overnight that Mueller will give a little bit on the obstruction questions, Errol, but he still wants to ask some obstruction questions face to face to the president. If Giuliani, can, you know, and the president's White House team can't can't stomach that, right? And they say don't do it. How does the president politically go out and tell voters and explain why he won't sit for an interview, even though he says he did nothing wrong? Po politically, he has quite a lot of wiggle room, shall we say, a lot of leeway with his base to say things that make no sense at all, right? To say things that are directly contra self-contradictory. But he is in a great deal of danger if he goes in, because whether or not they make some agreement around obstruction, there's always this question about, you know, sort of raising new issues and independently drawing new attention and new charges on oneself by giving false statements under oath. I mean, you, you know, you, you cannot do that. I mean, it, it is a crime uh, whether or not you have formally been placed under oath to lie to federal officials. You cannot lie to the FBI when they come and ask you a couple of questions. So um, he doesn't want to expose himself to that. I suspect that his lawyers will be able to convince him of that. There are a lot of things you can't convince Donald Trump about. I think on this score, they can convince him that these people are hostile. One word out of place can lead to a, a, a catastrophically bad legal situation for you, yeah. and you don't have to do and it. And this is someone who's been deposed before. I mean, he knows what it's like. Oh, he's a seasoned pro. He's had thousands of lawsuits against him and he's been through a lot and he's a master at sort of giving vague answers that are sort of are not prosecutable as perjury. But he's up against a seasoned team of prosecutors here. And if he lies, as Errol says, in the 
interview, he's committed a new crime. And he doesn't know if Mueller has some piece of information that there hasn't been any publicity about that they're going to launch on him in the context of an agreed upon subject area. And that's what the lawyers are afraid of. Errol, on the Manafort case, which is now in day three in, in the federal courthouse in Alexandria, Virginia, I thought the president might stay out of it and not tweet about it. He, he, he chose to weigh in yesterday on Twitter and said, why didn't the Justice Department tell me they were investigating my campaign chairman? It's kind of obvious as to why they didn't tell him. But I ask you that because his team is trying to get him out to do these rallies and get him not focused on, on the Manafort investigation, et cetera. Um, but, but, but he is weighing in. What's your sense in your reporting on how much the American people care about this trial and how they see it as relating to the president or not, because this is not a case, this one, mm -hmm. about his work for the president. Nevertheless, I think if you lay this on, say, the Watergate template that some of us older folks have lived through, um, this is around the time where the public actually does start to pay attention, where it starts right. to get big. I mean, it's one thing if some obscure, uh, you know, Papadopoulos or somebody uh, gets, gets charged and, you know, well, who was he and I never heard of him. This was the campaign chairman. This is somebody who's been a force in American politics for decades. This is somebody who's got f uh, an easy to understand story involving ostrich jackets and you know all, all kinds of opulence. To have the campaign chairman for the sitting president of the United States possibly convicted of, of financial fraud involving foreign powers. And then we're going to go into another trial. This is exactly, I think, when the public will start to weigh in, will start to sort of realize, hey, there's something seriously wrong here. And you know, one other thing I wanted to jump in on with that, with the Manafort trial, yeah. I was looking at some reporting in May by Maggie Haberman of the New York Times yeah. about one of the original questions that prosecutors were going to ask the president. And the question was, did you have any knowledge of Paul Manafort's outreach to the Russians mm. Um, prior to the inauguration. So, so I think there is still a potential for a tie to Manafort in the Mueller Russia probe and people that have to remember could be used. This was about his work for for Yanukovych, who was a you know basically a Russia puppet That's in right. Ukraine. So this is not just about Ukraine. This is very much tied to Russia. Yes. Thank you both okay. very very much.